<laughs> Rock Gernon here, one of the producers behind these videos with my partner Tyler Neal. Each Wednesday, we're going to start posting a new interview with a different priest throughout the diocese. Today, we're at Lumen Christi Retreat Center with Father P.J. Madden, pastor of St. Hilary in Matthews. Father P.J., welcome. Thank you, Rock. Lovely to be here on this beautiful evening in this beautiful location. Thank you for spending some time with us today. Father, how long have you been a priest? I was ordained in 2004 in um, St. Francis of Sales here in Homa after three and a half years in the seminary in New Orleans, Notre Dame Seminary. Wow. You, so you're from Ireland, right? Yes, I am proudly an Irish man and will never be otherwise, thanks be to God. <laughs> and uh, I, I, my, my background in here is I, I'm associated with this diocese in a very peculiar way. I came many years ago as a young man with my wife Mary and worked for what was then the Archdiocese of New Orleans as two lay missionaries. And uh, that's my earlier connection with this diocese. So how, and how did you end up getting to Homa Thibodeau Diocese? Well, when my wife, God rest her, went to heaven in, in 1999, her sister, Sister Miriam Mitchell, was chancellor here of this diocese then. And Bishop Gerald and she had a conversation after the funeral. And she told Bishop Gerald that I had been active in the church, had no children. He should invite me to come so that he could maybe make, ordain me like he did Jerry Villarubia, another grandfather of this diocese who was ordained as a married widower. And I came. Here I am. We're glad, to, we're glad you came. <laughs> Father, do you, uh, do you like to read books or watch good movies? Well, I was a movie goer when I was a young man, but the movies now, there's too much violence in movies nowadays, too much explicit nonsense in them as well. So I've become very much a, a bookworm. Uh, in my spare time, I like nothing more than to sit down with a good book on philosophy or medieval European history. I have a particular interest in that area because of the nature of the development of our church as the body of Christ in all its sinfulness in its members. As the Second Vatican Council says, always in need of purification in our human level, but perfect in Christ our head. That area, that era is very wonderful in what happened between the churches and the breakup of, into the Reformation and all that. Mm. Mm. Now, when you sit down and read one of these good books, are you gonna, are you gonna make a cup of tea or a cup of coffee? I don't know why you even ask me that. Of course I wouldn't drink coffee, I'm an Irish man. <laughs> I drink tea always, basic tea, none of this fancy herbal tea, now I might add. A decent cup of tea with boiling water, properly boiled, and a nice little drop of milk in it, and you're in heaven with a good book. Mm. Simple. Mm. What do you do on your day off? I don't have a day off. I wish I did. I'm too old for days off. I'm so grateful to God that I have a day at all to be oh. a day on or off, to get up and to be there for my people who will have privileged me with making me their pastor. And I, Friday is allegedly my day off. And if I have time at all, I will either read or go into Metairie, into Barnes and Nobles, have a cup of tea there with a couple of magazines, believe it or not, and then come back out and maybe spend some time preparing my homily for the Sunday. Although if you ask the people, they'll probably tell you, my homily never sounds prepared. But anyway, God is good, it comes out all right. Oh. Father, what is one of the, the uh, best things about being a priest? The greatest gift in being a priest, and I'm glad you asked me that now, Rock, is simply this, that when I stand at the altar to celebrate the Eucharist, no matter where I do it, whether it's here or in Ireland at home on vacation, I'm at one with the Holy Father in Rome, in the beautiful Basilica of St. Peter's, and I'm at one with the smallest gathering of people in the most underdeveloped part of the developing world, celebrating the one sacrifice and sacrament of Christ's redeeming love, pouring his mercy out onto a world that never needed Christ more than now. And for the moments of that mass celebration, I always feel this is the unity that Christ died for, and I am part of offering that unity to a world in his name right now. It's an incredible moment of privilege. Mm. That's the best part. Mm. Indeed. Thank you for your priesthood, Father. My privilege. Thank, and you, thank you for your, your time, time with us today. Thank you very much, both of you. Thank you, Rock. You're welcome. Ciao.